Good evening, everyone. Welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers update tonight, the 24th of January 2014. Very exciting update tonight. We're going to talk about a potential chase for the team, uh, should it eventuate. So we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about a WA low, which is at the moment uh, teetering on the brink of possibly developing, but more likely not developing. We'll talk about that as well. Now, I'm going to keep this update strictly on those two issues because uh, there are a couple of really big sporting events on tonight. So uh, I want to get back into them, and I'm sure you guys do too. So let's get straight into it. But just quickly before I do, it is important that we give ourselves a pat on the back and thank you very much for the support in social media that we've received over the past 12 to 18 months. We have finally cracked the 70,000 mark in terms of our Facebook following or, or Facebook likers. Thank you very much to those of you that do like us on Facebook and do follow our updates on there. Remember, if you don't have Facebook, you can always purchase our app uh, and that will keep you up to date. It, it has a live Facebook stream on it. So if you don't want Facebook for privacy reasons, you can always purchase our app. Help support us to make sure these videos keep coming and to make sure our chase team can get into more and more of these cyclones along with getting you better and better data from them and better footage. All right, folks, let's get into it. Okay, the Bureau of Meteorology today increased their cyclone outlook to moderate, which is a 20 to 50% chance of a tropical cyclone forming on the Monday. And that goes very clearly with what model guidance is showing us at the moment. Monsoon trough extends from Papua New Guinea to the Solomons, with an area of low pressure located just south of the Solomons. The monsoon's going to get stronger next week. And inside that monsoon, we are going to see a tropical low likely to become a tropical cyclone. And the issue, though, is where is it going to be and where is it going to go? And that's the million-dollar question. Well, we're not going to solve it tonight, but we're going to show you some of the data that tells us approximately what it could do. Alrighty, so looking out where this tropical low is, it's located just in there, just to the east of the 160 line, about 162 degrees east, about 13 degrees south. It's very hard to see on satellite because it is very weak. It is moving west at a very, uh, re a very reasonable rate of knots. Now, don't be surprised if this particular low washes out and a new one forms a little further to the west. Whatever happens out here, it's going to push to the west initially for the next two to three days. We're going to see a tropical low in the Coral Sea. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. That is all, that is pretty well 99.99% certain. Now, whether or not that low finally forms into a cyclone, there's a fairly high degree of confidence that it will. It's just a matter of where. Let's have a look at what the models are suggesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the tracks of the various model guidance that we have available to us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dissect the track a little bit more in more detail, particularly from the European, because it tends to do best on the upper level systems that impact and influence these tropical lows and cyclones. So the GFS model at this point in time believes that the that the low, just off your screen there, sorry for a second, um, the low here develops around the Solomon Islands, will push in a south uh, south direction and then southeastwards in the far eastern Coral Sea out to five days. We're not going to go any further than five days just because there's too much variability after that because some of the guidance has it going straight back into the coast, some of the guidance has it going way out towards New Zealand. Uh, it's just useless to be going past the five day mark at this point in time. So that's what the GFS model has. The GFS model also wants to develop a weak circular uh, circulation up here in the northern Cape York Peninsula, which is something that we will need to watch as well in case that does fire, uh, because some of the other guidance is suggesting the similar type of situation here with, uh, with a new type of system, probably past the five-day mark, although more around the day eight to ten, where it develops a new circulation uh, either in the Gulf or in the far northwestern Coral Sea. But anyway, this is the one we need to talk about, and that's what the GFS has it doing. So well away from Queensland, no threat. The experimental FIM model, which is a bit of a higher resolution model, very similar type of track that the GFS does. And that's not really surprising because they use the same type of physics uh, that the GFS model does. So if the GFS model uses the same physics as a FIM, uh, you're going to see very similar tracks from both the tropical lows expected to form in both models. The NavGem Model 2 forms the tropical low out here in the far eastern Coral Sea, pushes in a southeast direction, and also has the feature out here of the tropical low in the far northwestern Coral Sea. The European model track is a little bit more interesting and we're going to dissect this one in a lot more detail because uh, the GFS model and the, to a certain extent, the NOGAPS model, they do tend to overemphasize the strength of upper level features such as troughs. So it's important that we give you a different perspective 
on the type of guidance that you're seeing at the moment, which all of it at this stage to everyone here seems like it's very um, not real interesting at all. It just pushes south and then southeast. What are you, what are you talking about, Nitsa? Why are we even doing this video? Well, I'm going to show you some different and ulterior uh, track guidance from the European and also from the Bureau of Meteorology's Access G model, which tend to show us that it's not really a done deal as much as the models have it have us thinking that it is. All right, so the European has the system developing into a tropical cyclone, pushing in a south-southwest to southerly direction before, after the five-day mark, pushing way quickly out here to the east, southeast, or southeast. Now, that's the European deterministic. We're going to talk about the ensemble shortly, and that paints a very, very different picture. The last one we'll show you is the Access G model. This is not a very accurate model as well, but it is the Bureau of Meteorology's model, so we may as well show it to you, just to show you out to five days only. We're not going to track it further than that. So here it is in 24 hours' time tomorrow morning. In 48 hours' time, we see it very much stationary in the northeastern Coral Sea. In 72 hours' time, we see it pushing in a southwesterly direction. In 96 hours' time, we see it continuing to push in that uh, southwesterly direction. And then at by day 5 on the Wednesday, it is approaching the Queensland coast. Now, bearing in mind that, as I said, this model is not noted for its accuracy, particularly with tropical systems at this point in time. It is only a developing model, uh, and so it's going to take a little bit longer... Uh, uh, to, to get itself right in terms of its uh, its ability with tropical systems. It is also a very ho very low resolution model and therefore it sometimes doesn't pick up a lot of features that a lot of the other modeling does. So at this point in time, bear in mind that this is an alternate scenario and it is a possible scenario and I'll show you that it is a possible scenario very shortly. So it's not off its head, but it is not the favored scenario just yet. A much more accurate global model is the UKMET model, and the UKMET model shows us an alternate scenario once again. A tropical low located in the far northern Coral Sea on Sunday morning, pushing uh, by Sunday night in a westerly direction, and then as we head towards Monday, it continues to push in a west to west southwest direction, and then getting into Tuesday morning, located off the far north Queensland coastline, continuing to push in a westerly direction under the influence of some fairly strong ridging. Now, ridging obviously at the surface isn't that important, but at the surface, uh, it's going to try at least the lower levels of the circulation to push it in a westerly to southwesterly direction when we have such a strong high in the Tasman. But it's what happens above that level that is really important. So let's see what is happening above that level. So this is a look at the steering flow uh, at the 500 hectopascal level. So it's about 5 kilometres up in the atmosphere. Now this is generally accepted as the steering, uh, the steering level that we tend to look at for TCs. Now it's a lot more complicated than that, obviously. But for, for argument's sake and for simplicity, we look at this level uh, as, the, as the general guide at where these things are going to go. Now, what we have at this level by early to mid next week. We have a, an upper level high in there, and what that upper level high will try to do is it will try to push things in a westerly direction, right? Now, what we have in here, in this region, uh, in this region here in the Coral Sea, in the Tasman, is basically a weakness in that ridge. So there's no ridging there, and what we have just to the south of that is an upper level trough. Now, what is expected to, by the deterministic models only, what is expected to happen there is that the system, or the cyclone, or the low, probably by Wednesday we're talking a tropical cyclone, uh, that will then try to push into this weakness in the ridging uh, and towards that upper level trough off, which is a long way south at that point. But some of the guidance doesn't quite develop this trough in the longer term, and so that's why the cyclone continues to push in a westerly direction along the ridge, as opposed to a southeasterly direction along the trough. Now, I'm going to show you that the ensemble guidance suggests that this this movement that you saw in the first couple of models, where it pushes southwest, south, and then southeast, is not a done deal. Do not take that to the bank. Do not expect that it's just going to push off the coast. We're not sure of that, despite what you've seen so far in the guidance. So looking at the surface levels, on the Monday, there's a fairly clear guidance that we're going to see a low, pretty well where the UK met and the Euro are suggesting it's going to be up, basically southeast of PNG, between PNG and the Solomons, just to the south of that region. Now, on Tuesday is where things go a little pear-shaped, because on Tuesday, we either see the low continue to push westwards and into far north Queensland, or very close to far north Queensland, 
or we start to see it linger off the coastline, not really moving in any particular direction. So this entire area here, this entire area here could be seeing uh, that tropical low. So, uh, or the tropical cyclone by that stage. And so there's a very large spread out to Tuesday. Now, out to Monday, we're pretty confident there's going to be a low there. Out to Tuesday, we're not confident where it's going to be. And then if we head out to Wednesday, you can see that we could be seeing a lot of different scenarios by Wednesday. And this is the, this is the key thing to note here, is that we could be seeing the low or the cyclone already have hit the coast, possibly moved into the Gulf of Carpentaria. We could be seeing the cyclone right in here along the North Queensland coastline. We could be seeing the cyclone starting to push way out here to the southeast. So we've got three different possible scenarios out to just six days from now. Now that's quite unusual. The variability in that is very unusual. Normally, particularly the European, doesn't tend to vary what it's thinking or what it's showing by quite so much at such a short lead time. So it just goes to show how complex the system is going to be. Okay, now if we look at the upper levels at the time, what we can see, the same thing that I was showing earlier, the ensemble guidance suggests there's going to be an upper level trough in through here. But the key thing to note is these colorings. The, the, dark, the, the lighter the shade of yellow, the more variability there is in the guidance. So what that is showing us is that this upper level trough amplifying or pushing northwards is not a done deal. Now, if an upper level trough amplifies northwards, it will pick the system up and it will push it southeast, okay, away from Queensland. No harm done. That's it. That's all she wrote. But the issue that we have is that in the upper levels, we are not sure and there is no, not very good guidance as to whether this upper level trough will amplify far enough northwards to capture the cyclone or the low. So therefore, there is still a chance and there's still a reasonable chance of the low or cyclone pushing, continuing to push in that westerly direction into the Queensland coast or at least a southwesterly direction if this ridge isn't as strong as it's forecast to be. Okay, so that's where we'll leave the Queensland system. Now, it's going to be pointless for us to talk about any further possibilities. We've, we've basically covered what the issue is, all right? Whether the low ends up hitting the coast as a cyclone or a low, we just can't tell you yet, and we just can't say exactly whether that upper trough is going to capture it and push it at southeast or whether... Uh, the low will eventually just make it to the coast. We can't talk about rainfall from it because we just don't know what it's going to do. Obviously, if it pushes southeast, it's going to take all the rain away from Queensland. All right, so no one's going to get in rain. But if it pushes in a southwest direction, gets close to the coast, and then pushes southeast, we're going to see a period of rain for a large part of the coastline. Uh, if it actually hits the coast, obviously, we're going to see a lot of rain for most of the coastline. All right, for the uh, Western Australian region, the Bureau has also upgraded the potential for a tropical cyclone to form to moderate here on the Monday. They are expecting the tropical low to push, uh, the, uh, push into the Timor Sea, then lying near the North Kimberley on the Saturday. By the end of Sunday, the low is ex expected to lie off the West Kimberley. The system will then move over water to the north of the Pilbara on Monday. The model guidance agrees that conditions are only marginal for the system. This system is obviously going to be watched closely, but at this point in time, guys and girls, all of the modelling is really very, very cold on the idea of this forming into anything significant. So we'll take a look at some of that now. So firstly, if we take a look at the Euro, on Monday it has the low really just, just off the West Pilbara coastline. On the Tuesday, we have the low located somewhere uh, uh, over the Pilbara coastline to the north of the Pilbara coastline. On Tuesday we see the system continuing to push in a westerly direction, but really not developing significantly at all. Um, and then as we head towards Thursday uh, and Friday, it really washes out into nothing and in just a broad area of lower pressure. So really, folks, the Euro is very cold on the idea of forming this into anything significant whatsoever. Even the GFS, which tends to go a little trigger-happy with tropical cyclones, isn't really keen on the idea of this one whatsoever. Once again, by Tuesday, we see a tropical low located off the Pilbara coastline and really doesn't form it into anything significant there as we head towards Wednesday. It's just one big broad area of lower pressure. 
and uh, then Thursday as well. Uh, just We just see it lingering in the Pilbara slash Gascoigne region and not really forming into anything too significant whatsoever. So, folks, the GFS and the Euro both are very cold on the idea of forming this into anything, uh, anything of note. Obviously, whenever we have a tropical low located here off the Pilbara coast, you've always got to ask the question, surely, uh, with such warm ocean temperatures, they should be able to develop. The only thing that could be holding it back in our eyes is either dry air or vertical wind shear. Now that's usually the only thing that holds any cyclone back, especially in the Pilbara with such hot ocean temperatures. So we're going to take a look here on Tuesday morning, which by that stage the system is off, off, off the coast um, on the European and also off the coast in the GFS. And what we're going to look at is why the hell is it not actually developing there? Because normally, and, and by climatology, we expect that if they get off the coast here, they, they tend to rapidly spin up. But why the hell are the models not doing that? So let's have a look here. The first thing we check out is wind shear. Wind shear is the change of direction and speed of the winds with height. Cyclones require this red colouring. Red colouring suggests less than 10 knots. Purple suggests sort of 10 to 15 knots. So really, cyclones will survive in red and purple. Now, where this low is located is on the edge of some very high vertical or, or higher vertical wind shear. This blue stuff is very detrimental to cyclones, and obviously, once we get into green and yellows, forget it. There's no not going to be a cyclone in that. So <clears throat> you can see here, it's right on the cusp of that wind shear. The other thing we have to look at is uh, a comparison of the two of the two models about wind shear. You can see the GFS developing a little bit less wind shear in the region. Now, the other thing obviously we have to look at is the amount of moisture. Now, tropical cyclones, to maintain their structure and their thunderstorms, they require a lot of moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. If they don't get that moisture, they can't survive. Now, if we have a look at the moisture levels here off the Pilbara coastline at the time, we see some pretty dry air, 50 to 60%. It's not very dry, but it's dry enough to inhibit development of this particular system near the coastline. This purple colouring in this particular uh, guidance, we need to see blues and particularly the lighter blues uh, to show us really good levels of moisture. So we've got two issues there. We've got moderate vertical wind shear and we've got the potential to be seeing some drier air uh, in, that, in that area. Now the European keeps that dry air away from the actual circulation, but it's so close. Look at it here. This is the circulation right here where my cursor is. And look at this dry air trying to impinge on the circulation. So you've got an issue there both in terms of vertical wind shear and dry air. Now, vertical wind shear is starting to improve on the model guidance, but we're starting to see more and more of this dry air creeping in. And that's, uh, that's just as detrimental as the shear is. So at this point in time, folks, we're not expecting this one to form at least until Tuesday, but we'll keep an eye on it just in case as the global models do change. And, you know, if this dry air doesn't push in or the wind shear continues to relax in the area, at least the guidance showing us that it continues to relax, we may see that potential increase more than what the guidance is showing us. All right, folks, that's all we've got time for tonight. We're not going to talk about rainfall at this point in time because rainfall is so dependent on both of these systems at this point in time. The only one we can really talk uh, confidently about is maybe the Northern Territory, uh, and we talked about that last night. All right, thanks for watching, and thanks once again to our 70,000 Facebook followers. And remember, if you'd like to support us, uh, you can always donate to our team. You can always check out our apps. Um, and purchase our apps or you can even click on an in-video ad or a website ad that you might be interested in that's free takes five seconds of your time and we make about three or four cents out of it so um, or every little bit counts thank you very much for watching and we'll talk to you again tomorrow night